Alright, so now that we have completed creating an application, creating a custom object, understanding what is the difference between standard and custom in Salesforce, configuring page layouts, list views, record types, and playing around with the security using profiles and permission sets, now let's let's look at data, right? That's the most important part. So first of all, we'll start with data validation, right? So right now I'm on the COVID counts uh, COVID tracker application, and I'm on the COVID count list view. So if I click on new and I try to create a record, let's say for Delta variant one, let's click on next. And if I do not enter any va value values here and click on save, you see, I get an error message saying we hit a snag. Please review the following fields. Now this field is a master detail field, which is why it is a mandatory field to be entered, right? So this is a standard validation rule, right? But what if I wanted something like the entry date should be mandatory? right the entry date should always be mandatory now you would say that we could mark this required on the page layout yeah very well that can be done right but what if i added added one more one more clause to it the entry date should be mandatory and it should always be today's date right so it should not be anything in the past or in the future right so if if a person enters a date that's prior to today and hits save this value should not be uh, considered and should throw an error saying please enter today's date all right so for this kind of scenario we use something that's called data validation wherein validation rules come into picture so what is the object in concern it's covid counts right so we'll go to object manager we'll go to covid count and under covid count down below you'll see there's something called validation rules right we'll go to validation rules now you see there's no custom validation rule created so whatever we create fresh and we create as a validation for a business use case would be a custom validation rule and whatever salesforce uh, has already uh, you know some data type related rules or any kind of mandatory related rules those are called standard validation rules so i'll just go ahead and click on this new button and this opens up the validation rule creation page now there are three important things here the first thing is the error condition formula right you need to define what should be the criteria for which the error should occur right the next is the error message what message do you want to show to the user when the error occurs or this formula evaluates to true and the third and the last thing is the location of the error whether it should be on the top of the page or it should be on the field so here you can define what field you want the error to be shown on right this is very this is a very uh, good uh, thing to have or a feature to have right you can you can throw an error a validation rule error on a specific field right so in our case we would want to throw this error on the entry date right so let's select entry date here and what message do you do we want to say we want to say entry date should always be now the only pending thing is the error condition formula let me give this validation rule a name right now let's write the error condition formula now here you see that when you want to derive a formula you have something called insert field wherein you can go to the respective object and pick up the api name for whichever field you want in our case we want this field right here entry date right we can just say insert and the api name is inserted here right you cannot just simply type entry space date every validation any kind of internal stuff happens using the api name right so here we are using the api name for entry date which is called entry underscore date underscore underscore c which is a custom field now this should be always equal to today so here in this condition we have to mention the error condition formula which means write that particular criteria for which the evaluation if is evaluated if the expression is evaluated to true then the error message should be shown right so we can write something like entry date should not be equal to today's date right this is how we would write in write it in english right now if i were to translate this into what salesforce understands that would look something like entry date not equal to if you are not comfortable with the operators this is not equal to and maybe this is also not equal to if you want to in insert an operator you have this insert operator button here right here if you see something called not equal to yes we see something called not equal to right we can use this right here and i want to specify today's date so how do i fetch the current date from the system if you want to use a specific function you have this function category available here wherein you have date and time logical math text and advanced right and this is the list of all the functions you have readily available now here down below if you see you'll see something called today available and if you click on it you'll see that this returns the current date this is exactly what we want right so we'll just click on today and we'll click insert selected function right so this function comes right in here but we want to place it after our operator now i'll just remove what i wrote in english and this should look pretty much good in terms of what salesforce understands 
right how do i read it i read it as entry date should not be equal to today right now if i am comfortable with my criteria i'll just click on check syntax and this ensures that there are no errors compilation errors on my formula build right so it says no errors found which means we are good to go i'll just go ahead and click on save so my validation rule is saved and it is active already so now let's see and let's try and test if this particular validation rule is working so i'll click on new now i'll create any one of those records i'll enter the primary person name and let's enter something from the past and click on save so you see it's saying entry date should always be today's date right what if i try something from the future let's say save this still says entry should always be today's date now let's select today's date and let's click on OK and save. So this gets saved, right? So this is how your custom validation rule is working. Sounds good? All right, let's look at some new use cases, some other use cases. The next use case, let's switch to the contact object. Let's see what do we have in contact record. Let's go to this Andy Young's record. Let's go to details. All right. So let's say we want to have a validation rule wherein if the lead source is equal to web or phone inquiry let's let's use phone inquiry if the lead source is equal to phone inquiry they should always provide an email right that means if lead source is phone inquiry email will, will be a re, uh, required field a mandatory field all right let's go ahead and build this particular validation tool now here what's the object in concern the object in concern is contact so we'll go to object manager we'll go to the contact object under contact we'll go to validation rules and here let's create a new validation rule so validation rules are object specific right so you have to go to the respective object to create your validation rule now let me just give it a rule name right this is my rule name if lead source is phone inquiry email is mandatory and here down below i'll give the error message and where do i want to show this on the field and the field should be email field right if the error condition evaluates to true now how do I define my error condition formula let's write it in English first so it would be if lead source is equal to phone inquiry and email is empty right only then you need to evaluate this to true and show them an error error uh, message correct so now let's try to simulate or write this in in, uh, in salesforce's language right so let's use the fields first what are the fields that we'll need we'll need the lead source field and we'll need the email field so let's start using inserting fields so on contact let's find the lead source field this right here let's insert so if lead source is equal to phone inquiry so let me try to use the equal to symbol if I go to the insert operator, you'll see there's something called equal to maybe. Yeah, it's right here, right? Let's use this for now and let's say phone inquiry here because this is a string, right? So I have to I have to add this apostrophe uh, single quotes, right? So let me just add it. And what is my second field? The second field is the email field, right? So let's go ahead and insert the email field. So under contact, we should have something called email. Yeah, this right here. Let's insert it. Right? Now I want to check whether this field is empty. Right? Now I can look for a function or I can simply say not equal to an empty string. Right? I can either go with this or if I have a better function available here, let's go ahead and search this with text and see if I find something. Let's see. There's nothing on this text option, but let's go to advanced. There's nothing on the advanced option. What about logical? Right? So here you see there's an is blank function available. Right? It checks whether an expression is blank and returns true or false. So this is something we could use. Right? So I'll just insert this here. Is blank and under expression I'll just add the API name of email. Right? So this would be read as email is, email is blank. Correct? So these are my two conditions and I need to use a AND clause in between. Right? Because when both these conditions satisfy only then i want to show an error so in the, for, for that scenario we have operators here which are and or right so you see or is available here similarly and is also available so if i click on and you see that and can have multiple logical expressions and if all the arguments are true it ret returns true right so how does this look like if i just insert this function you see and and then you can have logical expressions 
so for our case these are the two logical expressions this is logical expression one and this is two right so what i'll do is i'll just remove this and these need to be comma separated right so let me just create the syntax add both my expressions inside the and and add a comma in between so these are my two expressions right let me now remove my english like validation rule criteria and now let's read this here so how would i read it i would read it as lead sources phone inquiry and email is blank then show this error message on this particular field make sense great now let's let us check syntax and see if this is the correct syntax to have all right so we are getting an error right so it's saying that the lead source field is a pick list field and pick list fields are only supported in certain functions so if we go back to that contact record you will see that the lead source is a drop down option right it is a pick list data type so for pick list you don't have all the available options here you cannot directly use equal to because this is a string right this is a string literal and this is a pick list so it's it's a data type mismatch so you'd have to look for a way to convert your pick list into a text value and for that you have some functions available on your function section right so let's go to advanced let's see if there's anything there i don't see anything here let's go to text and let's see if we have anything here so you see there's something with that's called pick val right so it resonates with the term pick list right so let's see what does it say it says is pick val pick list field comma text literal checks whether the value of a pick list field is equal to a string literal right this is exactly what we needed let me just go ahead and insert this function here. So here, what's the pick list field that I need to add? It would be lead source. And what is the text literal? It is phone inquiry. So this would do exactly the same stuff that we wanted to do using this statement right here. So now this should work fine. Let me add the comma here and let's try to see check syntax. So how do I read it now? If the pick list value of lead source is phone inquiry and the email field is left blank, then throw an error message in the email field sounds good let's click on save so this says you can only have all right so i just added a dot and stuff so let's remove this and now let's try to save it so it should only be alphanumeric so this is saved and this is activated now let's go ahead and let's enter web here and try to save it so when i enter web should the email be necessary no right so it should save fine it's saving up fine what about if i enter the lead source as partner referral and I enter a value here. So let's say I enter my value, the email value. Should this work fine? This should also work fine, right? Because the first condition is not satisfied. Lead source equal to phone inquiry evaluates to false. So let's try to save this. This should also save up fine. But now let me do something. Let me try to select phone inquiry and let us remove the email field. Now if I save it, do you think we'll get an error? We will, right? Let's see. Let's click on save. Alright, so this saved, which means there's some issue with our validation rule. Let's see what's the issue. The lead source is phone inquiry. Let me go back here. Okay, I missed, mistyped the spelling of the inquiry letter here. Let's edit it and let's change this to I. The name should be exactly same and it should resonate the value of your picklist field. Right? Now let's save this again. And now let's try to save it. So you see now you're getting the information um, validation tool saying please fill in the in email information also right now if i save the email information and try to save it should it save it should let's click on save so you see it's saving up fine all right want to see one more validation rule in action all right let's let's look at one more validation rule this time we'll go to the accounts object so let's write a validation rule for an account account re related use case let's go to all accounts and let's see what fields are available details tab all right so let's let's create a use case so let's say if the type is prospect if the ownership is public and industry is agriculture they then employees should be greater than 10000 all right let me repeat it if the type is prospect and the ownership is public and industry is agriculture the number of employees should always be greater than 10000 sounds good let's try to write the validation rule on the account object validation rules and let's write a new one so here what are the fields we'll need let's try to write our validation rule in english first like we are doing so if type is prospect let me just write it in English. 
if type is prospect and ownership is public and industry is agriculture then number of employees should be greater than 10,000 all right this is what it would look like in English let's try to convert this into the Salesforce validation rule now what are the fields I want here type ownership industry and number of employees correct let's insert all the fields so here let's go to number of employees so I think this is the field I'll just bring in all the fields and then we'll update the formula what is the other field it is type let's bring in type what is the other field it's ownership ownership insert what is the other field industry industry right so we have the API names now here if you see out of these fields there are three fields which are pick list values right so what function do we need to use we, we can use the is pick val function the one that we used earlier right so we can go ahead and say is pick val industry and it should match with a specific literal right we could have this syntax what is for the industry it is agri agriculture similarly for ownership what about type right this is for the three pick list values now what about the number of employees the number of employees should be greater than 10,000 right but I want to write the validation rule for which the error should come right so in our condition if industry is agriculture ownership is public and type is prospect and the number of employees is less than 10,000 or less than equal to 10,000 that's when we need to throw the error right because if they have entered something more than 10,000 that's correct that that should be how it should that that is how, how it should be right so the error should come when the number of employees has been entered less than 10,000 that's when the error should come right and what do you think should be added here as a logical clause the and condition right so and and I'll add a comma for all this expressions and close my and phrase let's remove what I wrote in English and let's now read it so this says if industry is agriculture ownership is public type is prospect and number of employees is less than equal to 10,000 then throw an error please enter employees more than 10k on the field that is the employees field right I can do that now let's try to check syntax first of all so syntax says no errors found which is amazing and let's give it a rule name I'll just call it so our third validation rule is active and this is on the account object now let's go ahead and try to just change something for here so if type is not is customer direct do we need to bother about anything else we don't right because the first condition only does not match let's click on save works fine what about if I say type equal to prospect but ownership is public again will the validation rule fire no it won't because the second condition is not uh, true now if ownership is equal to public and industry is not equal to agriculture let's say it's apparel and let's click on save now this also works fine because the third condition did not meet now if all the three conditions meet and employees is less than 10,000 you see this number right here let's see what happens so you see you're getting an error that says please enter employees more than 10k only for this specific use case this combination prospect public ag agriculture and now if I enter something like 19,000 here and try to save it let's see what happens this gets saved so this is how you can write validation rules I hope you are comfortable with writing validation rules and I'll add an assignment with this particular uh, lecture and uh, just try out uh, creating that validation rule yourself